All righty. We've, we've got everyone to kind of introduce themselves, which I find is kind of interesting because then you get to give us a bit of an idea about how you see yourself. And so I'll let you introduce yourself. Okay, no worries. Hello, my name's Jessie and my last name's Feitosa, which is a Brazilian last name because I married a Brazilian. Um, I'm 32 and I have a young daughter and she was the reason that I got back into my painting. She encouraged me because of maternity leave. It gave me that extra time to start my passion as an artist. I figure you must be pretty driven. Yeah, I'm quite motivated and organised because I have to be. <laughs> and how did you end up um, with the medium and the subject matter that, um, that you have? Do you want me to flip to your – I'll share your work. Yeah, sure. Because you've given us some great pictures as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, I love working with acrylic because it dries so fast and I can be quite impatient. I've experimented a little bit with oils, but it needs a lot more drying time. And I just like to kind of, when I'm in the creative flow, I like to smash out the painting as much as I can in the amount of time that I have while my daughter is napping, that's when I paint. So acrylic is what I use and I love it. I was first um, really interested in drawing because I guess I was influenced by my, my stepdad who's a tattoo, who's really into tattoos and I really wanted to be a tattoo artist. So I re really was into drawing but then I fell in love with painting when I did some painting courses and studied a little bit of art at TAFE. I loved paint. And mostly because I, I, love, I love interior design and creating um, a painting for a home, that atmosphere that it brings, that is part of my passion as well of why I went with paint. Um, yeah, paintings for for homes rather than going down the tattooing and drawing path. So I hope that answered your question. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, how did you end up with so much alcohol in your? Uh, <laughs> I know people must think I have a problem or something, but it's because. Um, I work, I still work in hospitality. So I've been working in hospitality for 12 years and that's influenced my work greatly. Uh, I get all my bottles from, empty bottles from work and then I bring them home and set up my still lifes. You don't uh, empty the contents, you. <laughs> no, people ask me that. Yeah. I don't personally empty them, but unless it's, you know, wine, then yeah, I drink wine, but not really spirits. So yeah, hospitality is a major influence. And I love creating like the settings around a table with, yeah, like some cut fruit and some glasses. I, I'm influenced at the moment with trying to capture a moment of when people gather together around a table with a drink or um, some like platters and things like that. That's what I'm working on at the moment with my um, working towards the ex exhibition for the end of the year. And it's all around gathering around the table with good food and good wine, drink and good company. So that's, yeah, that's what influences my work. Are you, do you sit on the ground or are you sitting right down next to your work i am this painting is it's not um it's not stretched on stretched canvas oh, so i had to tape it on the wall and i'm sitting just on a chair but usually i just have my canvas on the floor because i love turning around my canvas and 
I tried on the easel, but it's just really too, too structured. And I really like to almost <laughs> get on top of the painting and turn yeah. it around and I'm all different uh, angles to get the strokes that I need and stuff. But so this you, one wasn't stretched because it was going to Germany and it's cheaper to send unstretched. Ah, uh, so you don't usually work on an unstretched canvas? I usually do. Okay. That was my only one that I didn't. Right. Did they commission the glasses? They're amazing. Yes. She told me exactly what she wanted. Mm -hmm. She didn't want any alcohol. Okay. So she, um, she wanted grapefruit because the story behind it was it reminded her of her grandma and she wanted the colors of the grapefruit and the ultramarine blue to tie in with another painting that she had from an artist mm -hmm. a south australian artist um greta greta laundry yeah yeah she was on last meet the maker oh nice yeah yeah so tying in with the color some of the colors from her painting she wanted me to kind of tap into that colors in her painting commission painting so how do you how do you work are you getting up at 5 a.m or something or oh not by choice my daughter's up at 6 30 every morning so i'm up and and yeah my my life and creative uh, balance is really organized to a T. <laughs> like, so in the morning I will be getting all my home duties done, motherly duties, and you know the house is all clean. I like my clean environment. It just gives me that peace of mind. So once that all, that's all done, I usually try to tire my daughter out by going to the parks or. Um, yeah, just let her run around at the backyard. So that way, when she goes for her nap, she actually goes to nap because she's tired. And, and then it's my time, it's go time, like I'm on, ready to paint when she naps. So, and you, you've recently exhibited with the Ginger Lee Post-Pandemic Collective. Mm, yes, it was so much fun. Online. I loved it. It Is was that, such a good experience. Oh, is that the first time you've worked on a sort of in a collaborative environment? Yes. Uh, what, what made it such a rich experience? Just the opening night was really great. And even just this right now, just it was it's it was so much more than I expected. I because I, I'm only new as an artist and I've just done a few solos at some cafes and it was really just hang up the work and that was it. But this was yeah way more rich with um interacting with the other artists and we should and have put the I've made some good friendships up, yeah yeah we should have put the you girls there was a real climate of young artists connecting and talking and it was great and it's so important as uh that connection as an artist because it's yeah it's really isolating just painting on my own and then just mother all day and it can just send you a bit yeah crazy isolated so it was really nice to connect with a bunch of creators for a night. It was like just what I needed. Oh, brilliant. Well, it was kind of your idea, actually. Yeah, I just, I just planted a small seed. Honestly, it was just such a small seed that I planted and then it's just grown into this amazing thing because of all the creatives involved and, yeah, and the way that you really made it come to life, Nikki, definitely. I just so, planted a small seed of it. For those that weren't um, along for the painstaking journey, there was 22 of us that exhibited. Um, and we basically just fell together as a result of, of the venue registration section of the Sala website. So people just contacted me from all over and there were certain requirements that artists needed to meet and fees and things and um yeah 22 people came through and we had a great big huge delayed um opening night which was really successful and the work has been very i mean the work is sold which for me is that i there's nothing more exciting than texting someone from the collective and saying your work has just 
just sold. Yes, yeah, the best. <laughs> oh, good. We've got lots of um, Jesse's work here. You've got a great look um, with your social media and your um, and your photographs in these Thank you. these gin bottles, which is the one. Is that the one that sold at Ginger's with the Bombay Sapphire? Yes. Oh, those... Or was just two of them, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It was, um, yeah, in the biggest painting there, the two. That one there in the corner. Yeah. Called, yeah. And you those... used the resin technique on there as well. Yes, I put the resin on top of the, the bottles, which um, I've experimented a little bit. I put the resin on top of the absolute peach bottle as well. And it's a lot more work. But you wouldn't want it to go wrong after all your painting work. Well, yeah, it's always a risk, isn't it? And but I've learned if I didn't take that risk, I wouldn't have learned how to because I've I've stuffed up a few paintings because the resin can be tricky. And even with those two that were successful, I still wasn't 100 percent happy, but I've learned how to play with the resin a bit better how to tape off the edges cleanly and how to use certain tools to kind of when it gets to that tacky stage of the resin how to kind of scrape scrape any little spillage off cleanly before it sets too hard so I've just learned that and I've got more confidence with resining my work but my husband's he always talks me out of it he's like no because remember when you stuffed up the painting and he which I don't like that he limits me or boxes me in. And I'm like, ah, oh. the last few paintings, I wanted to add some resin on the bottles, but he talked me out of it. <laughs> so I don't know if I will continue with the resin because it looks great, but there's always a risk of mm -hmm. destroying your painting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and was there anything else that you wanted to, um, that I haven't covered? that you wanted to talk about? Um, just with any of the other questions? Yeah. Or, well, yeah, I was hearing Gus just briefly at the end when he was sharing about collaboration and stuff like that. I like some of his ideas like with uh, getting involved with the hospital or where to exhibit and stuff like that. And for me with collaboration, what has worked really well has been Instagram has been great to reach out with the other, other artists and, mm. and do a collaboration as a giveaway, like each giveaway a print or a small painting. And it's, mm. yeah, that's been really successful. I've only done one, but I put together um, giving away like a gallery wall of prints and I, I reached out to a bunch of artists and seven committed and we all gave away a print and we all promoted it on our um, Instagram account. And it was just such a great way to put your, your name and face in front of a new audience in less than 30 seconds kind of thing. It's just uploading this giveaway and yeah, it, it gained a lot of traction with new followers and um, people oh. reaching out for commissions and stuff. And it was, yeah, I found that really fun. It was just fun. How do you fit the commissions into your busy life? Um, I find it hard to say no. I'm working on a commission now and I I didn't want to say no, but um, so I just fit it in. I don't know how, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm working on um, a bigger painting and my timeline, it says like just this period of time I should just be working towards my solo exhibition and then someone asked for a, a commission painting and I'm like yeah sure <laughs> so what I'm not sure I'm, I'm just so busy but I just I paint every day so just go 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 really you paint every day every day yep so the household's used to it yeah well I've got my life 
balanced really well with as soon as my daughter goes for her nap, like I'm already in my painting clothes, I've already cleaned my brushes and I've already sat down with my coffee looking at my painting for half an hour, like working out where I need to work next. And because I don't have time for creative block or anything like that. So as soon as she's napping, I'm like, right, I already know I'm working on this part of the painting. Yes, yeah, so I, like I usually... That. Yeah, I bring Don't my painting. Don't have time for creative block, so I'm not having I, one. <laughs> exactly. I sit out here with my painting while my daughter's like having her snacks or something. I'll sit with my coffee and look at my painting and then, all right, cool. It's time for her nap. Take my painting back to the studio, which is just in my home. So that's handy. And then I'm like ready to go. Yep. So I usually get two hours there and then when she goes to bed at night, I paint at night. Sometimes I stay up really late, but that's the time I get to paint. <laughs> um, any questions for Jesse? I'll just put up your social media. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we all, it's a bit of a comment in the chat about the interesting idea of the Instagram promos. We could, we mm -hmm. could do a post, um, meet the maker, giveaway special maybe yeah definitely um and also i think um just talking about collaborations another thing that i've been thinking about but i haven't really tapped into is uh i think gus kind of triggered that point of my memory as well um reaching out to other creative industries so like furniture companies or interior designers and i've been reaching out to some furniture makers because they have kind of similar clients that are interested in styling their home with furniture or you know the paint or painting so I've been reaching out to those to do collaborations with and it's it takes takes a little bit of time to build that connection and stuff but Melbourne there's a few Melbourne companies that have been interested uh, furniture making companies so I'm excited for, for those collaborations kind of um, to come into fruition maybe next year. So, yeah. They should be excited. <laughs> you wanting to collaborate with them. Yeah, I'm excited that, yeah, thanks. But their furniture looks amazing. And I've seen some of the way that they style it on Instagram with um, the way that they photogra photograph it and they – have some art in the background so me reaching out to them uh has been yeah it's been six yeah a little bit successful with them showing interest so hmm. right is there any questions for jesse No, nope, that's all good with me. <laughs> me too. It's We've been going since nine, yeah. nine o'clock. So yeah, busy, busy. All right. Um, well, we might wrap you up. No worries. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for oh, this to is, be a part of it. Oh, it was great. A lot more uh, easier than I thought. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, it was great. So we will be back at one thirty. Um...